In today's video, we are going to be looking at the comparison of the Great Dane and the Kangal. These two sizeable dogs are both beloved for different reasons, many of which will be explored in this video. So let's get started. Welcome back to the Fenrir Great Dane channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Mimi and I'm a registered canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Great Dane, then how to become high level canine leaders that can raise perfect Great Danes. So if you're a lifelong Great Dane lover thinking about getting one or just started your journey with your new Great Dane, then this channel is for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss a future Great Dane video. So then let's get into today's video where we will be looking at the differences between the Great Dane and Kangal. We'll start with a quick look at their interesting histories. Let's begin with the Great Dane. There are records of drawings that bear a resemblance to these dogs dating back to Egyptian times, around 3000 BC. It is thought that the breed was taken across the globe by the Assyrians, who used the dogs in trade deals with the Greeks and Romans. The Greeks and Romans then bred these dogs with others, like the ancestral Mastiff and Irish Wolfhound, but it was the Germans that refined the breed into the elegant, well-balanced dog that we know today. Throughout the late 1800s, the aggression was bred out of the former hunting dogs, giving way to a gentle giant that is still loved today. Now the Kangal was kept by Turkish farmers for centuries as protectors of livestock, named from the Kangal district of Sivas province in central Turkey, where they originated. Records of such a dog go back to the 12th century. Over the years, they have been selectively bred to eliminate the human and prey aggression, leaving nothing but a reliable, predictable character. It's thought that they are related to early mastiffs and can be characterised as a molossa breed, alongside bully breeds and boa boils. They were first introduced in the UK in 1965 and the USA in 1985. Now that we know a little bit about the history of the breeds, let's look into a brief comparison of their strikingly different appearances. The Great Dane is an unmistakable breed. They have a regal appearance, are defined and strong. They are one of the tallest breeds. A male can be up to 32 inches at the shoulder and weigh up to 90 kilograms. Females up to 28 inches and weigh up to 70 kilograms. A lot of breeds will be similar in physique across males and females, but a Great Dane male will noticeably be larger and have a heavier frame. Everything about the Great Dane is regal and defined. They have a rectangular, expressive head and should have natural, relaxed ears. The neck is held high and muscular and should gradually broaden smoothly into their shoulders. The chest is broad and deep with well-sprung ribs which are tightly muscled, giving them an overall neat look. Now there's a lot of variety in the colours of their coats. The AKC recognises brindle, fawn, blue, black, harlequin, mantle and merle and the coat is short, smooth and should have a glossy finish. The Kangal is a big, powerful breed with a dense waterproof coat that falls slightly longer around the neck, shoulders and tail. The colour ranges from cream and fawn to dun and steel grey. It's common for them to have a strikingly black muzzle and ears but otherwise their coat is a solid colour. This breed is well muscled and powerful, even at a standstill they are impressive. They have a large head with a watchful arm and eyes, the neck is strong and rather thick with a slight dewlap. Whilst they are a big breed, they are longer than they are tall. They have a large chest, well sprung ribs, sloping shoulders with set legs. A male can reach 30 inches or 77 centimetres and weigh up to 60 kilograms. Females are around 29 inches or 75 centimetres and weigh around 50 kilograms. Their tail is long when they are relaxed and there is a slight curl, but when they are alert it curls right back up to their rump. Enough about the aesthetics, we'll now look into the temperament of these two breeds. It is no surprise when I tell you that Great Danes are known as gentle giants. This is the allure of having a dog as big or even bigger than yourself. They make beautiful additions to the family. Their peaceful disposition and relentless attempts of being a lap dog will just make them a joy to be around. Who could have a bad day when your 60 kilogram Great Dane is desperate to share your spot on the sofa? They're very people orientated and will even go as far as defending your home and family should they feel the need to. And that they will be a few times they will bark. They don't tend to bark for the sake of it. But you can expect them to be vocal with sassy back chat by grumbling, which will come from a good natured place, I promise. As previously mentioned, the Kangal has had the aggression bred out of its temperament, however they have retained the wary and territorial nature. They are calm and protective but also bold, naturally independent and very intelligent. Their independence lends themselves to living outdoors among the flock they are protecting, but they are also fiercely loyal to their owners. 
Their intelligence is what has made them so incredibly perceptive of their environments that they can judge who and what belongs on their territory. Once you've taught them their place, they will defend it to the end. They are an incredible combination of calmness and intelligence. They thrive being out protecting their land with very little interaction with humans, a true working breed of dog. Despite them both being sizeable dogs, a Great Dane can be with you for the best part of a decade, whereas a Kangal can be with you for up to 15 years. Both breeds are typical to suffer from either hip or elbow dysplasia. Another major concern about the Great Dane is GDV or bloat. The symptoms are that the stomach will flip upside down in the chest due to a buildup of gas. Once it does flip, it is a time critical issue. When the stomach flips, it starts to restrict blood flow, which can very quickly cause your dog to go into shock. A way in which you can help prevent this from happening is to slow feed your dog. This will stop them swallowing excess air if they are allowed to quickly wolf down their food. Elevating food and water bowls can help prevent a Great Dane from swallowing air into their stomach. For a wet or raw diet, you may even want to look into slow feeder bowls. They are extremely effective. But for a dry diet, large Kong wobblers are brilliant for their brains and their stomachs. Now the Kangal is a hardy dog. They are one of the healthiest breeds. Aside from the dysplasia, the other ailments you should be aware of are benign tumours, lipoma and entropion. The benign tumours shouldn't cause any issues unless they grow in an awkward place or grow too big. Lipoma is, a, is again a benign issue. It's a collection of fatty cells that build up into a mass. The same as tumours, they should only become an issue if they're awkwardly placed or allowed to grow too big. An entropion is where the eyelids roll in on themselves, causing a lot of irritation to the eye. The only solution to any of these conditions is a surgical procedure, but none of them are typically life-threatening. The Great Dane is a docile dog, very happy to go for leisurely strolls with their own, as they've been refined into companion animals rather than highly driven working dogs. They are of average intelligence, and so they will do well with the regular commands such as sit, stay and recall, etc. The thing you should be wary of is that they don't always know their size, so you'll want to be able to control them indoors. Giving them a command that instantly gets their attention, even when they are engaged in rambunctious play, will save many accidents from happening. A Kangal has a very high drive to do the work they were bred to do, much like a GSP, and so if you're training them for that purpose, they will be very easy to train. Their fierce loyalty to their owners will make them extremely susceptible to learning how to please their owners. Fitting with their calm nature, they respond best to words of praise and positive reinforcement. It isn't recommended to have these dogs if you can't give them some level of protection role. A dog with high intelligence is best off working and exercising their brains to what they are genetically inclined to do. I hope you enjoyed today's video, if so make sure you hit that like button, get involved down in the comments section below and don't forget that if you are new here to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated Great Dane videos coming here every week so I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Great Dane channel.